This is life with a 25 million a year salary versus a $25,000 a year salary. Imagine filling a basketball court with a thousand people. Only one of them is going to earn more than $1 million a year, while 230 will earn less than $25,000. So what do their lives look like and what can they afford? I'm gonna show you the lifestyles of people making $25,000 per year 25 million per year and everything in between. Let's start with $25,000 a year with Michael. Can you hear me, Michael? Sure I can, Rick, nice to be here. My name is Michael, I live in Austin, Texas, even if my accent doesn't say so. I'm single and luckily I have no kids, cause let's say it, I'd have a hard time feeding them. Sorry kids, you got it worse than a gibbon. <laughs> I work at McDonald's and they pay me $12.50 an hour, which by the way, is quite a bit more than the minimum wage of $7.25 an hour, so I shouldn't really complain. I work 40 hours a week and I take two weeks per year for holidays, sickness and vacation, which unfortunately, I don't get paid for. So at the end of the year, I round up $25,000. By the way, I've heard that almost one American out of four earns less than me. So how do I spend my 25,000 bucks? First of all, I gotta pay taxes to Uncle Sam, right? So after taxes, I'm left with around $21,969 or $1,830 per month. Checking some data from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, I see that people in my income bracket spend around 41% of their income on housing, meaning I spend around $850 for my housing expenses. Man, that's nearly half of what I earn after taxes. Hi, I'm interested to rent this apartment. Yeah. I'm the landlord here and I make the rules, so I want you to earn at least three times a monthly rent. Do you? No? <laughs> bye bye, nice to meet you. All right, I'm gonna need flatmates. Let's look at Craigslist. I can't afford to live downtown, it's still too expensive. There's a place right outside the city in Cedar Park, $850 just within my budget. But hey, I need to get to my job. The McDonald's I work in is around 20 minutes away from where I live. Now, like most American cities, there is not a great public transportation here, so I'm gonna need a car. I bought a 1995 Toyota Corolla on Facebook Marketplace. Not like Porsche, but it takes me to work almost every day. According to the BLS data, low-income earners spend more from transportation than any other income level in America. For me, around 15% of my pre-tax income is spent on transportation. That's $312 for gas, insurance, parking, maintenance, and repairs. At this level, I'm forced to buy a really old car if I don't want Dave Ramsey to get mad at me, but at the same time, I'm at the income level where more than anybody, I need my car not to break down. Toyota? God help you. According to the BLS data, I spend about 16% of my income on food, or about $330. I might eat burgers for free since I work at McDonald's, but if I had to pay for them, I couldn't even eat at McDonald's every day with my budget. So I gotta go to the grocery store. I have to keep a good eye on discounts, forget about meat or fish, and have a hard time buying fresh food both because the price is high and because most lower income areas in this country don't have so many grocery stores. I can't even get food stamps from the government because I'd have to earn less than $2,005 a month, but I make $2,083. Damn. Eating out is also out of the question. I do it occasionally when I manage to have some money on the side or when I decide to use my credit card and make that balance look even worse. But then Dave Ramsey comes back at me and says, you unbelievable little children people. I do enjoy eating out even though I'm poor. You need to value your own time as if you're a king. It takes time to make your own food. You wussies. Very well said, very well said. Okay, after my basic needs like housing, food and transportation are covered, I'm left with $335. Not much, right? And I'm just getting started with the expenses. Even after government help and Medicaid, I still pay around $200 per month on health-related expenses that are uncovered by government insurance. After all of this, I'm left with something more than hundred bucks for everything else, like internet, cell phone, clothes, fitness, even some entertaining like going to the movies, or maybe even just an emergency. You see, I'm basically left with nothing and I can't invest. I can't put aside any emergency savings. I live in fear that my Toyota Corolla is going to die on me and I can't even get a dog because dogs are so cute. Come on, look at that. Mom, mom, mama.
Whatever happens to me, whatever emergency, I'm either gonna get a loan from a friend or I'm gonna find myself amassing credit card debt with a 20% interest rate just to get through the month. Now you see why 44% of Americans won't be able to pay an unexpected $1,000 expense from their savings, because there are none. So what am I left to do? I could take a second job and break my back to get through the month, or try to get clever and switch jobs to try to get even 3,000 or 4,000 more per year, and that would be already something. Or maybe I could start a side hustle online and hope to catch a break. What's clear is that even if I get almost twice the minimum wage, it's still not enough to get me through the month. But what if I earn $40,000? For this, we got Liam. Do you hear us, Liam? Yes, I do, Rick. My name is Liam, I'm a construction worker from St. Louis, Missouri, and I make $40,000 a year. This gives me around 3300 bucks a month, but after federal and state taxes, a little over 2700 bucks. I'd love to have kids, but I'm not sure I can take good care of them, and I'm hopelessly waiting for a breakthrough in life, which apparently never comes. Using that data set from BLS, my budget for housing is 34%, or $1,133. So I got this one-bedroom apartment outside the city. Between the 955 bucks and utilities, I'm paying 1133 bucks for my monthly housing expenses. I live 60 miles away from the construction site that I work in right now, and since also here there is no public transportation, I had to buy a car. After saving up, I managed to purchase a 2013 Hyundai Elantra on Facebook Marketplace for a little less than $4,000. I managed to buy it cash without financing, I'm pretty proud of it, but only because I watched Rick Austin's videos on investing in finance. Anyways, since I don't remember how much I spend on average, I'm gonna take the average from BLS, which for my income category is 17.4% of my income, $580. After this, I'm left with a little over $1,000. Food. Someone like me spends around 14% on food, or $460 a month. Usually I go and buy groceries because, again, I'm not swimming in money. But I still manage to dine out or order some food once or twice per month. In this income bracket, you're in a weird position because you are not poor, but you can't really do much for entertainment if you're not smart enough. That's why you still need to look for discounts at the grocery shop, use coupons, and still limit yourself when it comes to fresh food and meat. When it comes to health, luckily my uncle is the boss of the company, so he sponsored my healthcare plan a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. Still, I'm spending around $300 a month on medicines, doctors, appointments, and hammering down buildings broke my back, so the doctor told me to sign up to a gym. Gyms are expensive, man. Damn how expensive they are. But luckily, I found one for 25 bucks a month. So after covering basic needs and fitness, I have $223 left for everything else. Cell phone, internet, clothes, this brings me down to 120 bucks. It's weird that I earn almost double as much as Michael, but still I'm left with almost nothing at the end of the month. Luckily, I watched Rick Cousins' channel, so I decided to invest this $120. But all of my friends, they don't, and they spend them all on entertainment. But the truth is, can you blame them? We break our backs every day to build America, and we can't even go to the movies. F that. All right, let's get to 100 grand a year now, and let's see what our budget looks like. Can you hear us, James? Hi, Durek. Thank you for having me. I'm in finance, and I'm fresh out of college. <laughs> what do I do? I scam people, Wolf of Wall Street style. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I work almost 70 hours a week, but my job in New York makes me $100,000 a year. So I'm officially in the six figures, and girls are starting to show interest. All right, hi guys. So my question for you is how much money do you think a guy should make per year? Um, like a million, two million. In case you wonder, I'm now near the top 10% of earners in this country. With a $100,000 salary, I get $8,343 every month, which sounds great, but Uncle Sam in New York wants $2,500 from me, leaving me with just $5,800. I haven't really saved up to buy a house because, come on, I'm too young. But I know that people in my income bracket spend around 30% of their income on housing. This means for me that I shouldn't spend more than $1,740. When I check Craigslist, I get my first reality check. 
finding something under $2,000 is impossible apparently. I can either live with flatmates or I can get something like this. This costs me $1,100, utility included. And the only disadvantage is that I'm quite far away from where I work downtown. Now, honestly, in New York, I could move with public transportation. And that would probably be even cleverer considering the traffic. But I'm young Yay! and I like to show off. How much can I spend for a car, Rick? In your income brackets, you spend around 16.3% on transportation. So you got $945. Since I've been using credit cards for a while now and have good credit, I can qualify for a good car loan that allows me to buy this nice, beautiful $50,000 Mercedes. It will cost me $755 a month for five years which leaves me with $190 every month to spend on gas, repairs, and insurance. Damn, I might have gone over budget a little. Let's say I spend $400 on gas, repairs, and insurance. This makes $1,155 for transportation, and I'm left with $2,745. Well, let's move to food. Food is not a problem for me anymore. In my income bracket, I spend on average 11% or $640. I personally spend a bit more, around $900, because I like eating out from time to time and because I live in New York, which as you know, is pretty expensive. When I buy groceries, I buy fresh food and I'm not constantly thinking about discounts and food prices. It's true that living in New York with $100,000 a year, I'm not rich, but as long as I don't have a family to take care of, I'm also not really counting every penny. In my company, I have a great coverage for health insurance, but I still pay around $400 a month on health, like medicines or some particular doctor visits. I'm left with $1,445 to cover phone bills, gym, internet, clothes, Netflix, and so on. Since I follow Rick Austin and his channel, and I subscribe to it like you should, I invest every month and I know that if I'm patient, one day I'm gonna become a millionaire and I'm gonna reach financial freedom. But I'm young, so I'm not really in such a hurry. So I still manage to save up enough for a vacation per year. My work, by the way, pays me even when I'm taking time off, which is quite an advantage. All right, I guess I'm up now. I'm Manu Ginobili, ex-NBA player from the San Antonio Spurs. And I make around a million dollars a year now from my side job in the NBA, but of all, from my investments in the stock markets and in real estate. My million dollar a year gives me $83,000 every single month. After taxes, since I have a mix of stocks and real estate, I'm left with something like $60,000 a month. Honestly, I feel sorry for the first guy that earned $25,000 because in one month after tax, I earned double what he makes pre-tax in an entire year. Mother f I'm officially among the top 1% of income earners in this country. And I follow this Rick Austin guy because he looks like me and gave me quite a bit of tips on investing. For my house, I could actually buy cash if I sold some stocks, but I prefer using that to avoid taxes and using my assets as collateral. Now, I make enough money that I can buy a house in the range of $3.5 million. That would mean a payment of $30,000, which is 36% of my pre-tax and 50% of my after-tax money. Okay, that's maybe too much. Let's go down to $2.5 million or $21,000 per month. That is 25% of my after-tax income. This one's kind of nice, in my nice San Antonio. Four bedrooms, five bathrooms, a beautiful outside area with an elegant swimming pool, inside a nice living room with a fireplace, and much, much more. This house is gonna cost me around $17,000 a month for the mortgage. But in house cleaning service, that keeps it clean and shiny every week, landscaping service to keep my yard greener than the neighbors, and our trusted maintenance specialist will quickly get to $20,000 per month. For transportation, I spend on average 16% of my after-tax salary, which means a little under $10,000. I lease my car, of course, so that I can always change it after a couple of years and get the newest, fanciest one. Like this Genesis, that cost me around a thousand bucks per month, and for me, spending a thousand dollars in a month it's like if the guy that earned $25,000 per year were spending only $25 per month. Since I'm rich, I like to take the taxi often, and I basically never think about money when it comes to transportation. The only thing that I don't have is a full-time private driver. 
Flying is never a problem, if I don't exaggerate with the flights. Sometimes I can enjoy a really, really nice international flight, which of course I book in first class. Food? Well, BLS data says I spend on average 11%, so I can spend around $6,600. This is a lot of money. If I don't have extreme expectations and I don't want a private cook, I can easily eat every day lunch and dinner at the restaurant. I could easily try all the restaurants in San Antonio within a year and then move to a new city. But I don't do that, so I usually spend around $4,000 per month on food. But honestly, I don't know exactly, because I never ever look at prices for food. I mean, you can bring me a salad, ask me for $40 and I'm gonna pay. My health is everything for me. So I have no problem spending between $2,500 to $3,000 per month. I can go to any doctor, pay for the best therapists out of pocket. And since I'm earning so much, I can also enjoy the happiness of helping all my family and friends with their medical bills. After all of this, I'm left with almost $24,000 per month to spend however I want. I have a personal trainer that comes to my house three times a week to train me in my built-in gym and I pay him around a thousand bucks. All the other expenses like cell phone, Wi-Fi, they are so low that for me it's not even worth mentioning them. So I'm left with $23,000 per month that I usually invest in a stock market. Rick Austin told me to play it safe, so I invest them in a broad-based index fund like VTI, the total stock market from Vanguard, that historically gave an average yearly return of 10%. So, the main difference between me and someone who has no money at the end of the month is that my net worth actually grows because I easily spend less than what I earn. And since I'm investing the surplus in the stock market, it's growing exponentially and the amount that I have at my disposal every month grows and grows, making it even easier to save and invest more. But now let's briefly take a step further and see how the elite of the United States really lives. Let's see what $25 million a year buy you. My name is Henry. I'm the founder of a quite successful tech company that specializes in cybersecurity. And I make 25 million a year. When I get paid from a company, I don't get it in the form of a paycheck, but in stock options. This way, I don't pay any taxes, at least as long as I don't exercise those options and sell the stocks, which I rarely do. And even if I did, I pay around 20% in capital gains tax instead of what poorer people pay, which can go up to 37%. Apart from the stock options that I get from a company, my net worth is incredible because I still own 15% of my billion dollar company. Only a month ago, I wanted to buy this nice yacht, so my tax accountant gave me a neat trick to save on taxes. Hey Robert, I need to sell $25 million of my stocks because I wanna buy this yacht. Whoa, you're going to pay millions if you do this. Instead, go to the bank and ask for a $25 million loan against your stocks. You mean I should borrow funds from the bank using my assets as collateral? Correct, loan proceeds are not taxable. So by borrowing, you can get access to cash without having to pay tax. And the fact is, if you're a billionaire, you don't need any income. Right, Robert? Now, if I borrow money, guess what? Do I pay taxes on debt? How do I get rich? I borrow money. Another big loophole in capital gains tax that rich exploit is called the stepped up basis, which is the first step of the so-called buy, borrow, die method. Buy, you buy assets like stocks or create assets like a company. Borrow, because you borrow against your assets to avoid paying taxes. And die, if a billionaire were to sell his stocks, he'd have to pay capital gains taxes based on his profit. But if he holds off selling his entire life, when he dies, whoever inherits the stocks and then sells it would only have to pay taxes on what they earned after they inherited it. So all those original gains of the father stay untaxed. Now, back to me please, because I wanna show off my house. If you miss Mr. Beast's video on houses from $1 to $100 million, my house is the $30 million one. I've got 16 bedrooms, a living room that looks like the White House, an oval office that looks like the White House, and everything else that a person can dream of. Like a real amusement park inside the house. Go have fun, but don't break anything. Roger that. When it comes to transportation, I live in a dream. I have a private driver for my Bentley that takes me everywhere I need, while my secretaries take care of all my reservations and plane tickets, both for private 
and business trips. I was thinking of buying a private jet for myself, but actually right now I'm still happy chartering private flights. When I fly private jets, it costs me between 20 and 50 grand, which is our yearly income for most Americans, but for me it's just peanuts. I don't personally cook, in fact, I think I entered a grocery store maybe 15 years ago last time. But no problem, neither I have to buy or cook food, nor have to clean up after eating because my stuff personally takes care of everything for me every single day. This is probably an important difference with people from other income brackets. Multi-millionaires and billionaires have a whole staff of people who help them manage their life. Cleaning, cooking, maintenance, fitness trainer. I even have a house manager that takes care of managing all these people. Don't ask me how much all this costs because at my income level, I only look at the price when it comes to buying a house, a plane or a yacht. What's crazy about people making $25 million a year is that they make in one hour exactly what Michael makes in six months. Obviously, I could tell you that you need to start a company, make it successful and retire a multimillionaire at the age of 40. And that's true. If you make it, that'll be the quickest way to get to such wealth. But the truth is, nobody needs to be so wealthy. What everyone needs, though, is to have enough income that you don't have to worry about covering your basic needs. Enough income to be able to buy a house or a flat with a 30-year mortgage without having to spend 50% of your income on it. Enough income to be able to have a family without feeling sorry for not being able to provide for them. And getting there with the right mindset for saving and investing is possible for everybody. If you're interested in improving your finances and investing, check out my channel and contact me anytime with any question. Don't forget to subscribe to become a better investor. And apart from this, I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next video.